Okay, I'm back. So let's give this a go because um, I got disconnected on the computer and I'm hoping that my um, my phone internet's going to work um, okay uh, to finish this live for you guys. So I'm just going to recap on the first um, uh, three tips of my business travel hacks and then I'm going to move on to the other bits that I have to share with you guys. So number one business travel hack was unpack while I'm away and home um, immediately. Number two was always, always carry travel size toiletries to save on the, the, the hassle of having to take a big tubs of stuff and obviously um, be a more, lot more mindful in terms of um, how much you're taking and the weight of those things. Sorry, the light is really, um, if I'm looking really pale and white in the live is because if I turn it the other way around, I will be black. As you guys can see, we're at Melbourne Airport. Oh, the fog's starting to lift a little bit. It's quite foggy out there, but it was heavier just before. So our flight's been delayed for an hour. So, okay, let's keep going. So I've obviously covered off those top three things just in the video before. And if you missed the uh, detail around those, please go and watch the other live. All right, number four, uh, food, um, uh, food and sleep um, um, hack. <laughs> Uh, well, as soon as I go away, you know, if I do have a place where I have uh, got the ability to make my own food, I will go shopping and find the supermarket nearby. So all of that unpacking stuff and um, and getting stuff in place, feeling like I've moved into a place is super important, including obviously being, um, you know, uh, set up in terms of snacks and food and drinks and things like that that I like to have. Yeah, otherwise, you get stuck, um, you know, making bad choices and eating crap food, um, you know, so that you can just feel full and not hungry. So always discover where the nearest supermarket is so you can grab your own stuff as you need to. Um, now for... Um, short flights and flights that don't have a lot of time difference um i don't have any hassle having sleep by the way i'm an awesome sleeper but i do and have suffered from jet lag a lot in the past so how do i deal with jet lag well i've got the good stuff from the us uh, which is the 10 milligram melatonin um, uh, you know supplements and they help me so now that i've been back from the us for like six days i took them every single night and half an hour before i went to bed and i'm fine i'm now back on track i did not have one um sleepless night or waking up and not falling back asleep so that's been working really fine so australia only sells the one or two milligram melatonin but in america you get the 10 milligrams from any pharmacy and i brought back a few bottles of those um, just uh, to use uh, when i am uh, going long haul and uh, that was an awesome tip shared um, to me by one of my authors and i have sort of um um, made it part of my routine because it has significantly helped me with jet lag over the last um, year um, into going into so many long haul flights. All right, so next one, number um, um, five is, um, is and this uh, saves a lot of time and hassle and all that sort of stuff, but booking um, all your flights and all your travel six in six monthly blocks. So what I mean by that, well, um, when now when we finish this intense period after our May retreat, we have two months off. And during this period, I mean, there's going to be lots of downtime, but what we're going to do is sit down and organize the next six months of full, all the accommodation, all the trips, all the, um, everything we need to get regarding um, our travel, we're going to get it all done in a day or two at the most, which means that then we don't have to think. We schedule everything in the diary and what gets scheduled gets done. So we're not sort of um, reactively booking trips. We're not, um, or, 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 you know, getting tickets at the last minute. Obviously, we save quite a bit of money um, doing this ahead of time and getting the best deals that are there for the airlines and of course accommodation and looking for uh, various things in terms of car hire and all that sort of stuff and Stuart's responsible for accommodation uh, and car hire and I'm responsible for flights so we both share the responsibility of booking everything therefore it works really really well. Um, <laughs> I said this one before, but it is a separate point on my list. Only carry exact amount of outfits. Um, so I don't carry a million different clothes if I feel like this, if I feel like that. Um, you know, which sometimes people, that's how they pack. Um, I basically carry the exact uh, amount of outfits, a couple of relaxing kind of stuff. And, um, and I don't um, uh, 
have anything else like you know and you guys can have and I used to use these but now it's so so automated in my in my head in terms of what I need to pack but if you have a checklist in terms of what you want to need to remember to pack I still have checklists so when I do go on overseas trips where I'm going to be away for a longer period of time I really don't want to forget something I will just pull up one of my older checklists and just make sure that I have taken absolutely everything from it um make sure when you do go away i mean we can miss our family our kids partners um a lot and we um, tend to speak to each other two or three times a day on facetime um you know connect and just have chat those regular chats so it doesn't feel like you're away um and that way you know you're updated in terms of what they're doing but then um you keep them updated how you're going and everyone knows that um you know and we all do the countdowns as we get home uh, you know how many sleeps to go until we see each other and all that sort of stuff it's really really exciting um, number eight is uh, invest in your I'm sure all of you have done this but if you haven't done this of course you know weight limitations um, um, are an issue uh, nowadays airlines are a lot stricter than used to be please invest into one of these which is your um, weighing luggage thing I literally have it always on me and it doesn't matter if I'm traveling or not traveling my weighing luggage um, uh, measurer is um, is always always handy near me because hand luggage is quite strict um, with different airlines and I just don't want to get into the uh, position of having to throw out my own stuff and um, and you know get into trouble and, and knowing all that sort of stuff so make sure you use that and invest in some um, good quality light suitcases we've got the Samsonite ones they only um, for the biggest one it's only like 2.6 kilos um, and for the small ones 2.3 kilos which means we've got a lot more room to pack all of it, all of the books um, that we normally do so investing in I think expensive suitcases are a great investment for many many years I've had the cheap ones in the past that fall apart their um, zips break um, and those things on the zips come off so then you're going to use your fingers to put stuff around and the last couple of years I said that's it <laughs> I'm buying some really good ones really light ones and that um, has made a whole lot of difference I protect them I buy the protecting things that you put over the top of them and they're like good as new so highly highly recommend you invest in some light and high quality ones Samsonite is usually the best brand to do that all right, number nine in my travel hacks is make sure that you um, uh, also invest in an international power converter. And I got one of the ones that whereby it's got like four or five USB ports as well. So you literally only need to plug in one into the wall. It's got then one that you can put in any um, appliance into it but then it's got the four USBs because most things that we charge nowadays are USB powered so therefore you don't need uh, like a power board otherwise if you needed more than one plug obviously take away with you and a uh, power board uh, and then you use the one converter into the wall and then you've got your power board with your own personal power stuff um, um, power spots so um, so yeah I got one uh, for about 50 or 60 dollars and um, and it has got the different connections for every single country in the world and it's one and it's always the handy thing that I always pack in my bag and number 10 is uh, make sure that you are part of frequent flyer programs your points do add up if you're gonna travel a lot uh, but do cluster your travel so I normally uh, uh, prefer to travel in cl like in a period, set period of time and then have a lot of time off rather than say traveling now and then in three weeks again and then again in three weeks. I've had the most intense period of travel right now for the last um, four months. Um, I haven't had a week off. <laughs> That's a big cluster. It's highly um, not recommended but it was self-inflicted because I obviously didn't plan um, that out as, as well as I should have but I have learned a ton of things, a ton of things about what I should do moving forward especially the next six months and also into the into next year I hate when these announcements go up they confuse me <laughs> they get me stuck anyway so guys um, I've get, given quite a bit of um, depth and detail around these tips um, I didn't want to dwell on them too much but I hope you took away one or two that you go oh, I never thought about that um, you know I might do that for myself um, next time I travel uh, but travel light travel only with whatever's necessary if you forget stuff so what you can buy stuff um, 
at the other end um, it really doesn't matter matter use lists and um, and just remember you know um, enjoy the moment and, uh, and the places you're going and utilize your time so that's one thing that I didn't mention wherever I, whenever I travel um, I make time go faster by um, you know just immersing myself in work that I normally um, get distracted in doing in other places so now when we're gonna go on a three and a half hour flight up to Cairns we've got a list of different things that Stuart and I will be doing on the plane that don't require the internet um, and um, you know part of that is going to be our planning our goal setting um, different things that we just don't get to do in our everyday activities thanks Helen I hope yeah I hope you guys um, are getting this and do watch that first video which had a little bit more explanation on uh, the first three steps of the business travel hacks um, so you utilize your time I mean I've written books on planes uh, like right now our flights delayed so we're gonna be sitting here for two and a half hours gonna reply to any outstanding emails anything techy uh, obviously while I'm having the internet uh, that I can sort out get myself ready for the flight and then utilize that time so when I get to Cairns like I kind of feel like there's a clean slate and that I can focus now on the workshop that's coming up tomorrow up there all right, let's go move into now part, well, it's part three, but it's part two of the uh, content that I wanted to deliver today. So for the, first con uh, the first content was obviously my uh, business travel hacks for business purposes, what are the kind of things to do and uh, what I do to feel home away from home and back home when I'm not home for too long. So the next one is um, what can WrestleMania teach us about um, uh, business and uh, what makes them so successful? How can we take some of these things that they do and think about embedding them into our business? All right, so as you guys know, two, Saturday, uh, two Saturdays ago, well, two Sundays ago, I was, um, we were in New Orleans and right uh, during this exact time, uh, which, which is the reason I couldn't run UBS Live, is that we watched WrestleMania for seven hours at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. And by being there, I wasn't really sure if I was going to enjoy it because I don't follow wrestling, my um, Stuart and Judd do. And I was like, you know, um, am I just going to sit there like a stunned mullet um, and, um, and not really, you know, have, um, have an amazing time? But I can say hand on heart that I had the most amazing time and experience and I was like also observing it from another uh, viewpoint it's like why are these guys so successful what makes them like um, have this um, great community and following and uh, people that just are absolutely obsessed by it so I came up with a list of seven things that I observed that WrestleMania as a business does um, that um, maybe you can take away from it so let's go through each of them all right, number one, which is what I thought was the biggest one, was that they create an experience. And what do I mean by that? Well, everything that they do, it's like an absolute show. It's a spectacle. The music, the lights, the, um, the storylines, the, um, the surprises. Um, you know, they absolutely create this experience that people would crave to have again and again and again and again, which was really, really cool. So creating an experience also in our businesses, it is so important. The reason I choose to do a retreat style program over a coming to a training room for two or three days with me to learn is because it is an experience. It's something that people um, get to remember for the rest of their lives. They um, you know it, it's something where they're doing something brand new you know we think of different games we think of a theme we think of a song we think well you know we have some aspects of what Wrestlemania does but um, you know you bring the energy and the memories and of course then they're there doing it with other people who are on the same journey so therefore they um, um, building connection not just with myself and Stuart but with each other which are lifelong um, friendships I don't know about you but when I have gone on trips like Kentucky or other group um, uh, uh, cruises and things like that where people get to spend this intense time together you know you remain sort of really having that memory for a, for a lifetime so number one on my list was they create an absolutely rocking experience even for someone who's not a WrestleMania fan 
I had such an amazing time watching the crowd, watching the the announcements, or watching the the music, the the, the how how people enter the, the the stadium. It was just everything about it was wow, wow. Even even for someone who doesn't follow them, um, th that particular sport. Number two, um, why they're so successful is, is consistency. And this will come up in every successful person or business that you may have observed or, been, um, or, or watched is that consistency is really key, I always say. Um, you know, they've been consistent for over, I think I read that they started in the 50s. Here's Stuart, he's brought me my coffee. Thank you very much, Stuart. Oh, let's see if it's a good one. Mm. Oh, that's good. It's good. Back to Australian coffee, which is really yummy. Um, so they're very consistent. They've been around. I think I, I read um, the original person who started this was um, Vince McMahon's father, which was in the 40s or the 50s. And now we're, what, 60, 70 years on? And they've consistently uh, run this and uh, turned up and improved and evolved and you know, gone, um, gone on with the times, which is a really key trait that every single business person must develop within their businesses and be the leading example of exactly that. Which leads me into point number three, and this may not be relevant to everybody, but it's very, very important to me because this is how I value, uh, the, uh, this is a major value around my business. But number three, WrestleMania is a family business. Right, so not only do they have the consistency, but they've passed it on through their family, you know, through the generations, um, uh, you know, from the father of Vince McMahon, now Vince McMahon, now Stephanie, and what, what's the brother? What's the brother's name? Stephanie McMahon eh? and Shane McMahon. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart's helping me now. And they, of course, now have children and all that sort of stuff. And um, and it, it's the bonds are really strong because the people who are in charge of this company are family members, and they they've you know they've grown up with it. Uh, they have a passion around it, and they they want to continue. And people know them as a family. They're not really known as a huge man yes they're a corporation they have a lot of employees and all that kind of stuff but when you look and you they're part of it you can feel that there's that family um a line uh, running through it and how it kind of uh, it started from there and going um up. good morning from western australia <laughs> it is early over the, at your end you guys um okay so create they've created an experience they're very consistent through, they've remained consistent because they've passed it on through the generations as well as through um it is a family business so people give a shit when it's a family business i find that those involved like Stuart and i really give a shit about what happens in our business what happens to our clients how our clients are treated um you know what we do for them how can we improve and of course we're thinking long term beyond our lifetime is how can we impart this business and this system onto our children who can then take um, take the baton and run with it so it's really really important when you do have a family business uh, you'll uh, see that the care factor is a lot greater even if it explodes as big as Wrestlemania um, has exploded okay point number four why Wrestlemania is so successful and what can we take away from from it is that they have a massively engaged community massively engaged community if you were there you would have heard all the chants everything everyone knows what to say when to say it how to say it how to act with their body um, you know what I mean even my son who um, who is nine and who's been just watching it through the TV here uh, here when he went in when we went, all went in there it was like as if we were just part of uh, something we've always been a part of so their community is massively engaged you know the act actually um, involve them into everything that they do it's not just a spectacle of what you're watching there on the stage but they're also um, the, the actual audience is part of the act which is really 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 um, interesting to see you know I've never seen even at football matches or um, other sporting events as engaged a community that is part of the whole show so massively engaged community is super important for any business um, to thrive and it isn't just about um, I'm not here talking about here quantity 
I'm talking about uh, a quality engagement. So you don't necessarily need to have hundreds of thousands of millions of followers and all that sort of stuff, but you need to have a quality of engagement um, that you know obviously um, will, will grow also the quantity over a period of time. So that was my point number four that I observed. I've never observed a more massively engaged community as I did at WrestleMania. All right, number five point of why they're so successful and what can we take away from them is uh, the elements of surprise. They have so many elements of surprise when it comes to um, uh, what happens uh, on your journey with them. So uh, how do we take this away from um, being in business ourselves? Well, what surprises can you bring into um, the things that you do for your clients? Um, one example that I do, a lot of people who come to my half day event, they don't actually realize they get a book um, as part of their ticket. So when they walk in, um, you know, they will receive a personally signed book and they go, oh, wow, you know, what, I didn't realize I was getting it. Thank you so much. What does that do? Well, that builds further rapport. It makes them more engaged. It, um, it um, you know, just uh, um, grows that no like, and trust kind of um, aspect of, um, of the, if meeting this person for the very first time cold. Um, you know, at our retreats, we don't reveal absolutely everything uh, when it comes to how everything is going to unfold. You know, of course, we have our song reveal in terms of what it is. We have different games that I don't know that are going to happen, that are happening, that are going to make them laugh or uh, give them big aha moments. So how are you bringing uh, elements of surprise into your business so that people, you know, people love surprises, you know, and that's the thing that they're going to remember and um, have embedded in to their mind so that's number five number six <laughs> is the leaders walk the talk so how does WrestleMania uh, why is it so successful and what does it teach us within our business are you lead, uh, walking your talk because Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon which are the children of the owner current owner the CEO of WrestleMania they both wrestled at WrestleMania so they got in on the stage and had a couple of the fights of course this is part of their storylines and all that kind of stuff but they're not just kind of these people removed to the side that you cannot access that they are up there you know in the offices you know running the business they're actually on the ground with the people with the community with the um, audience with um, with everybody um, as well as putting their own bodies on the line uh, to provide the further elements of surprise and to uh, to continue being the faces of the business actually that's a point that I didn't put down but their faces are very very well recognized because they actually walk the talk and there are um, up there in um, in the lights um, and um, doing what everyone else is doing and of course um, as well as running the business so you would say they work the hardest because they're doing the the, uh, the performances the wrestling um, the running of the business the creative side, uh, side of the story writing and all that kind of stuff uh, but they're leaders who walk the talk you know, and there are so many leaders out there well, that are not really leaders uh, who actually just talk and talk and talk and they actually have not done stuff themselves to prove that that's where they have had the success. And the very last point that I had, number seven, of how and why WrestleMania is so successful and what can we learn from it to translate it back to our business is they have a ton of branded merchandise and promotional material that goes and spans the world. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's all about brand awareness, right? And, um, you know, he started off in the past by having little branded, um, I actually received this little um, uh, notepad from a gorgeous author of ours who's gonna be writing their book at the October retreat in, um, uh, in Dubai. Uh, she has a branded little uh, notepad. Other people have done pens, um, you know, but what have you got? For your business that is merchandise that other people can perhaps receive or buy from you that is branded um, in our business we have got um, the ultimate um, 2018 uh, business plan well this plan is now being um, so here's one of mine of course um, um, I brand um, I created this four years ago I'm building the fourth fourth uh, year's um, planner right now. It's going to go to print very, very soon. But that's branded merchandise. It's going to be in someone's face all year round so that my brand is remembered and, um, and they're top of mind with people. 
you know of course the books that I write are part of my branding that part of my merchandise and all that sort of stuff so what kind of physical stuff are you bringing out in your business that is continuing to grow the brand and the awareness and the popularity of what you do around your business Wrestlemania has got a down pat with of course so many figurines tops I'm not wearing my top but Stuart is check him out there he is He's wearing his WrestleMania top still, all you guys. Yes, it did go through the wash a few times, but I had mine on a couple of days ago because I was excited to have been there and, and I had the Fimbala one, which is one of my favorite wrestlers and all that sort of stuff now. So, um, you know, uh, how are you branding and what physical stuff are you bringing out? It doesn't have to be for sale, but also, you know, what is it that they, um, you know, people can get from you that will keep you memorable and top of mind. So there you go, you guys. I gave you the top seven things that WrestleMania in why about WrestleMania and why they're so successful but more so what can we take away from those seven things and embed into our business so I do want to see some comments and questions and um, remarks in terms of what you guys thought about these seven things and also you know if you do have extra travel hacks I shared my top 10 travel hacks um, to make you feel at home while you're away from home and of course to keep your balance in life earlier. Um, so you got my top uh, my top three in a video before we cut off this one, but my next um, seven are in this one, the start of this one. Share, have you, have you got any extra travel stuff that you do that perhaps I can learn from that I can embed into my travel experiences to make it a lot easier and, um, and enjoyable and faster you know I, I like uh, tips that are gonna save me time um, and of course weight in my suitcase as well because as we said earlier we're not in the marshmallow business but books we are carrying over 80 books with us on the plane today and um, and planners as well as uh, only 10 kilos of clothes and 50 kilos of the other stuff so that's insane Anyway, guys, I'm really happy to be back um, doing this UBS Live for you. If you do have any special requests in terms of what topic you'd like covered next week, this week was a double whammy because we did miss the last couple of uh, weeks. Um, Mr. Video uh, Cindy, um, just look at my personal profile and the videos are all on there. The, this is part two. Part one was shorter because I got cut off on the internet and I had to split the two videos. All right, gorgeous people, it's 9.32. I am going to go and enjoy the rest of my coffee and do all the techie things before we get on our flight and do all of the non-techie things and planning stuff uh, while we fly for three hours and 20 minutes to Cairns. So far north Queensland, here we come. Cairns tomorrow, Townsville on Thursday and Sunshine Coast on Friday. Mwah. Bye, guys.